<laughs> no, go away, go away. <laughs> That girly scream you just heard sums up my experience with Golem so far. Hi, how you doing? Welcome. My name is Venom. This is not a review of Golem PS4. This is my first impressions of it based on approximately 1 hour and 40 minutes of play in the opening sections. Let me tell you, because of jump scares and clunky controls, it has been a literally horrifying experience. Golem, a PSVR exclusive, was announced back during the 2015 PlayStation experience. Developed by Highwire Games, an independent developer, co-founded by legendary Halo theme composer Marty O'Donnell and Jamie Greshmer, who was a game designer on Halo and Destiny. So the studio has a strong pedigree. As a PSVR owner, there is always the feeling that there are not enough games being released that take advantage of the platform. Sure, there are all those format demos, the experiences, and the Batman Arkham VR style mini games, but after that, all you want is an honest to God, straightforward game that you can enjoy. This is why Golem has looked so interesting to me. Set in a Saharan inspired desert town, patrolled by bullying guards, your character's father hunts buried relics to sell so that he can buy food. You play his daughter, a young girl named Twine, who is confined to her bed after being injured in a terrible accident. Using the magical dream stone, you gain the power to inhabit a mysterious golem which you use to explore an ancient city, fight enemies and unravel a profoundly personal mystery. The game has a clever Russian doll conceit. As a player, you wear the PSVR headset and use the move controller to see through the eyes of Twine and control her. She has a bandage or cloth covering her eyes. She uses the move light dream stone to see through the golem's eyes and control him. Sometimes you have games that include fourth wall breaking nods or winks that involve the player. This is a little bit different because there's no direct reference to the player, but this echoing of player actions in game actually increases the immersion. So player, Twine and Golem are inexorably linked in this action adventure. But how does it play? Well, that depends on the player and their comfort in using VR. Let me tell you where I'm at. I love VR, I get motion sick in some games, and I don't like horror movies or games. In a VR game, the controls are everything. This is played using a single move controller. You can set the tunnel effect to high comfort so that when moving, the screen image is cropped to reduce motion sickness. You can also use quick turn to enable you to look left or right around 180 degrees in large snap increments. However, a teleport movement option isn't included. For some people, this is not really going to be an issue, but for me, I'm automatically feeling queasy, even with sickness tablets. Worse than that though, is to move forward or backward, you hold the T button and then have to physically lean forward or backward and the game will move your character the way you move and look. I regularly saw don't lean too far warnings, but maybe the developer should have interpreted their own warning that if the player is doing this, then their controls need optimization. Once you get the hang of it, this works fairly intuitively, but my sickness was compounded by the fact that there is a subtle side to side swaying when moving forward or back, and the game doesn't always register your movements. So from a stationary position, you have to lean harder. And for a platform where it's a known issue that some people get sick, this game had me rocking forwards and backwards throughout. You can't play this game motionless, sitting back comfortably in your chair. In part, this is Sony's fault because Highwire likely wanted to simplify the game control by giving it one-handed use and the move doesn't have a D-pad or analog stick. But also, I think there is a belief that people who play VR games also want them to be highly physical with plenty of motion control. For games like Beat Saber, this might be appropriate. Before this, I would have liked the option to use the DualShock 4 in my other hand or as a complete replacement to the move. <laughs> Jeez. Jesus Christ. If I buy a VR game, it's not confirmation that I want to be part of a jump scare horror game. In the very beginning, you are in control of a puppet exploring underneath the floorboards. There are these proportionately giant hissing bugs. Most of the time, there is just a few minding their own business, but the hiss in stereo is scary. And in one part, I took a wrong turn and a whole swarm of them came running towards me, hissing louder and louder, then jumped at me with their tentacles. I didn't capture that, but I was shouting in horror. 
And yes, I know this makes me a complete pussy cat. I found my way around them, but it kept happening and for me, it was a genuinely horrifying experience. I fought enemies in VR before, but I think this was so bad because it was giant insects crawling all over my face. I had to take the headset off and I think I'm suffering from golem PTSD. And I know that some people might like this stuff. Maybe you do. Others, like myself, hate it. Whichever camp you fall in, the game should be labelled as such. I was expecting a fantasy game and this was just jump scare horror. It was almost enough to put me off VR. Next day, I went back. Eventually, I got past the whole insect section or catacombs and took control of a golem. And that's where the game feels like it truly begins. Marty O'Donnell's orchestrations kick in and you can hear his signature strings telling a story befitting the soundtrack of a children's Christmas movie. And later those banging drums signaling a call to action that is reminiscent of Halo. Using the golem, I began to explore a ruined city. Scattered throughout I found orbs that had helpful messages for me. I was able to find some treasures and I fought against other automaton-like enemies. And these didn't scare me. Come on in. Combat is simplistic but functions yeah, appropriately for the golem. You can hold your sword up to attack and to parry strikes. So now I'm at the point where the game is just getting going. I had hoped to have completed it, but realistically, I think I will only be able to play this in smaller chunks. But this has left me wanting to use my golem to explore further. Thanks for watching. If you have a question, leave it in the comments and like and subscribe. Cheers. Yo, 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 yo,